In this video, I'm going to be doing a slightly more complex example and I will also be introducing you to something that's called chain rule. Now, when exactly do we use chain rule? Let's get that sorted first. So basically, if you guys remember from the earlier example, I said that if the radius is increasing, so that because of that radius of any solid, let's say a cone, if the radius of a cone is increasing, so because of that increase in radius, it's going to cause the volume to increase, it's going to cause the surface area to increase also. So that's exactly what we're going to do in this particular example. We're going to find out how exactly do you measure the change in another variable which is being caused as because of a change in a certain variable. So in short, we're going to find out what happens to uh, the rate of change of y with respect to time when there's a uh, when there when x is changing with respect to time okay so we'll do this example and uh, get that sorted so it says variables x and y are connected by the equation y is equals to x cubed minus 5x squared plus 15. given that x increases at a rate of 0.1 units per second so we have the change in x with respect to time so let's write that down this basically means dx upon dt which is equal to 0.1 units per second find the rate of change of y this basically means that we have to find out dy by dt all right remember when i said uh, i told you guys in the earlier example if it's asking for the rate of change of y then dy upon dt when it says volume dv upon dt area da upon dt so this is what you and i have to find out okay so and when do we have to find this out at the instant when x is equals to 4. So first thing we need to do is we need to make an equation and that equation which I am going to make is called chain rule. Okay, so let's write this down that this right here is chain rule. Now learning how to make a chain rule is very simple. Okay, so what you have to find out is dv, dy upon dt. All right, so first thing you should do is you should write that down. Let me write this again dy upon dt. Okay, now this is going to come as a result of multiplying two fractions. Okay. So the numerator of the first fraction is going to be the same as the numerator of what you have before of the fraction that you have before the equals to sign. And the denominator of the second fraction is going to be the same as the denominator, sorry, of the fraction that you have before the equals to sign. Now what you're going to place over here is going to be the same. That means and it has to be relative to the question question so that means i can't i can't write dv here why because ultimately they'll get cancelled out and you'll be left with dv upon dy upon dt so i can't write dv here because we don't have dv in the question so what i can and what i should write here is dx because that's what we have in the question so whatever you place here should be should be relevant to the question okay so since we have dx since the questions the other variable that the question is dealing with is x so i'm going to plug in x here if it were volume i would have plugged in dv over here so this is the rule that we're going to use in order to find out dy upon dt so one thing that we have right away is dx upon dt which is 0.1 so i'm going to use that okay so let me write into 0.1 here now we have to get our hands on dy by dx somehow now we've done questions similar to this you guys know exactly what i need to do i need to write down y which is x cube minus 5x square plus 15 then let's differentiate y with respect to x so we have 3x square minus 10x plus 0 there's no need to write 0 and then i'm going to plug in the initial value of x which is equal to 4 so 3 times 4 squared minus 10 into 4 Let's work this out. 16 times, so 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 3 is 48 minus 40. So that means dy upon dx is basically equal to 8. So now that we have dy by dx also, I'm going to write dy by dx over here. And this is going to give me what? This is going to give me dy upon dt. So 8 times 0 0.1 is going to be 0 0.8. And sorry, not dy by d, uh, d it's, this will give me dy by dt. Yeah, sorry about that. So there you go. Now we have dy upon dt. Make sure that you write the unit, which is going to be basically units per second. Okay. So yeah, this is this is basically how you work out rates of change when there are two variables involved, right? One being x and the other being y, and they're both changing with respect to time. All right. So that's that's all for this video. This is what I want to teach you guys in this video. Hope you guys understood this. See you guys in the next one. Until then, take care. Bye bye.